it's Michelle your CSC biology tutor welcome back to my channel it is summertime and outside is extremely hot I honestly think the Sun is trying to get friendlier with earth I mean sometimes it feels so bad you feel like baked and sizzling in a frying pan am I right? Yeah, am I right? this at least you just wish you could go and sit in the fridge and just cool off only if that was possible huh Recently, news reports from across the world have been flooded with warnings and red alerts about heat waves in various regions, from Europe to North America, and yes, even here in the Caribbean. So with all this heat wave buzz, I figured it would be interesting to talk about how the body is affected when exposed to too much heat. So before we look at what happens to our body during a heat wave, let's examine what exactly a heat wave is. So it's a period of excessively hot weather, which may be accompanied by high humidity. So generally, hot air will tend to trap more moisture. So that's what's contributing to the high humidity. And a heat wave would obviously occur in the summer months between June and August. So this is when the temperatures are highest in the year. And speaking of high temperatures, I thought it would be pretty interesting to look at some of the highest recorded temperatures throughout in the world. I mean, my goodness, the highest recorded temperature is 56.7 degrees Celsius. That was recorded in 1913 in Death Valley, California, USA. How on earth did those people survive that heat? And I'll bring it home to the Caribbean. The highest official recorded temperature was 43 degrees Celsius in 1954, and that was measured in Dominican Republic. Now, today, this year, 2019, the highest recorded temperature so far is 45.9 degrees Celsius, and that is in France, a European country. Now, who would think that temperatures would get that high? Now, one of the highest recorded temperatures here in the Caribbean in this year, 2019, is 39.1 degrees Celsius, and that was measured on the 22nd of June in Kingston, Jamaica. I mean, with these high temperatures, how does the human body survive? So that is really what I want to look at. How does the body naturally regulate its temperature? Now the optimum human body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. So as humans we are considered homeothermic. That simply means that our body temperature would remain constant in spite of changing external temperatures. So we have special inbuilt mechanisms that would help to regulate the temperature within the body. So if outside is too cold or if it's too hot, there's certain internal mechanisms that would be responsible for controlling this temperature and making sure that even though outside is changing, the temperature outside is changing, that we can maintain that normal optimum body temperature. So if you recall, there's certain molecules in the body that will be denatured if exposed to very high temperatures, enzymes I'm talking about. So it's important for the human body temperature not to go above 37 degrees Celsius or even below. Now, the hypothalamus of the brain is the major control center that would be responsible for coordinating temperature control in the body and keeping it at 37 degrees Celsius. So what happens is that the hypothalamus acts like a thermostat. It senses the temperature of blood passing through it and then when it recognizes that okay this blood is too hot or it may be too cold, it's going to send messages along the different nerves in the body to different parts of that body to regulate the temperature. So the common body parts that the messages will be sent to will be the skin, the muscles underneath the skin, the blood vessels. So these are the parts that are going to be responsible for changing and allowing the temperature within the body to be regulated and to be maintained at 37 degrees Celsius. So how exactly does the body respond to high temperature? What's going to happen to our body when outside is like really, really hot? So at high temperatures, anything way above 37 degrees Celsius, first of all, the sweat glands are going to be activated. So the skin is going to produce sweat to cool the surface of the body during evaporation. And it's important that last part, evaporation, you want to make sure that you have some kind of wind blowing on you, 
So if you're sitting in front of a fan or by the window getting a breeze, the sweat needs to evaporate in order to provide that cooling, that cooling feeling. Um, if you're just sweating and you're in an enclosed room, the sweat glands producing the sweat, all of that is going to be a waste of time because you're still going to feel hot. So this is one of the first mechanisms that would occur in the body to help try to cool down the body temperature, to reduce that body temperature. So you have your sweat glands activated. Secondly, the hair erector muscles beneath the skin are going to relax and that is going to cause the hair to lie flat on the skin. So instead of standing upright, as it would in cold weather, the hair is going to lie flat and prevent any insulated layer of heat from forming. So that is another mechanism that would occur to reduce the temperature to help provide a cooling effect. And then thirdly, the process of vasodilation will occur. So that simply means that the capillaries, the blood vessels beneath the skin, so in the dermis, that is the layer just beneath the epidermis, these blood vessels are going to dilate. So they're going to expand and they're going to allow more blood flow to the surface of the skin and allow the heat to be lost from the blood. So this is another cooling mechanism, all in efforts to help reduce the high temperature of the body. So these are the three main mechanisms that occur in the body to control your body temperature when outside is hot. Now what happens to the body in too much heat? So basically what's going to happen when the body cannot control the amount of heat that is exposed to and the mechanisms are pretty much failing. So some of the common effects on the body. The first obvious one is dehydration. Now when outside is really really hot, you are going to be dehydrated, you're going to be losing moisture from sweat. So that is one of the main problems associated with exposure to too much heat. So the cells become dehydrated and when cells are losing water, when they're losing moisture, that is not a good thing because they can eventually shrink and they will not be able to operate as they should. So dehydration is one of those major, those first major things that happens to the body when exposed to too much heat. And dehydration can lead to a number of various other effects on the body, which would include the headache. So when you have dehydrated cells and you know the muscles tissues of the body your head your brain the muscles lining your brain are going to tend to be think of it as crying out for more water more water so that is what usually causes um, headaches so dehydration is one of the major cause of headaches so because you're not getting a good supply of water moisture to those cells surrounding the brain so that's why you tend to feel this um, the muscles start to contract and lead and contribute to that throbbing feeling in the head. Also irritability, you tend to be more miserable, you may tend to snap at someone. So the headache and the irritability, the heat <laughs> contributes to these things. And then we have muscle cramps. So once again, the muscular tissue is going to be losing water. So it's going to react in a negative way and cramping will occur so you feel that soreness that uncomfortable feeling especially in your legs fifthly we have heat rash that is a very very common effect on the body during a heat wave so you will see these um, tiny little bumps usually red caused by inflammation and the blocking of the pores so those little sweat pores that usually sweat would come out to become blocked, trapping the perspiration under the skin. So that is what contributes to the heat rash. The next effect would be lethargy and weakness. So this is definitely common. So you're dehydrated, you're feeling weak. So all of this is linked up. So you just have that natural tired, fatigued feeling in the heat. And then seventh, edema heat edema in the lower limbs so we're talking especially the feet so this is basically an abnormal accumulation of fluid in the body so remember I talked about vasodilation just now so you're gonna have um, the body fluids 
pretty much moving down to the the legs um, by gravity being pulled down to the legs of gravity and remember vasodilation you have um, the blood vessels pretty much opening and expanding so you have a little more blood flowing through so that can contribute to the flow of the blood the accumulation of fluid so this is what's going to lead to the swelling in your feet and then finally sunburn so this will definitely happen to the body if you are directly exposed to the sun say you're out at the beach the whole day you have no sunscreen on the uv lights from the sun can alter and damage the dna in your skin cells and that is what would contribute to premature aging of the skin and obviously short term you would have this burning sensation because technically the sun is burning your skin burning the cells and that can lead to redness even itchiness and then eventually peeling over time so these are some of the general common effects on the body during a heat wave when the temperatures are really hot so when our temperature mechanisms fail in the body and when you're really exposed to excess heat you can have some serious effects happening such as heat exhaustion or a heat stroke so if you're really exposed to a lot of heat it can lead to fainting warm red dry skin rapid pulse so your heart rate really becomes fast and then obviously the headache like what we would have mentioned earlier and then for those persons who are who have certain health conditions so cardiopulmonary renal endocrine and psychiatric conditions they tend to get worse during um, a heat wave when the temperatures are really high these conditions especially in the elderly and then also the very young babies exposed to too much heat can actually lead to death there has been many cases recorded around the world of people who have died from um, heat stroke heat exhaustion complications with certain health conditions during a heat wave so it is very very important to make sure that we protect ourselves during this extreme summer heat so we need to avoid sun exposure between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. that's when the sun usually is shining the the hottest and the brightest it's advised to wear loose breathable clothing so clothing that is tight and clean on to you definitely not advisable and aim to cool down with a fan your condition and it's extremely important to drink plenty of water to keep hydrated even if you are not thirsty because sometimes you don't really necessarily feel like drinking water but it's important to drink lots of water throughout the day and finally if you're going to be exposed to the sun the actual direct sun out on the beach um, taking a run or a jog whatever it is outside you should wear sunscreen to protect your skin and the sunscreen should have at least a sun protection factor of 30 and up so these are the ways that you can protect yourself during the heat wave so I hope you found this video interesting and I thank you for watching. Feel free to share and also like and subscribe.